Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to walk you through the journal entries for accruing your bond interest as well as amortizing your premiums and your discounts, specifically using the straight line method of amortization. So let's start with interest. Um, here I give you an example. Assume that a 10-year, 200,000, 12% bond was issued at face value on May 1st, and it pays interest every year on April 30th. For a company that accrues interest monthly, here is what your monthly interest accrual will look like. If you, if you take your $200,000, your 12%, and you figure out your annual rate, that's going to come out to $24,000 per year of interest. Break that down monthly, that's $2,000 per month in interest. So every month, you would record interest expense, $2,000, because you have accrued a month worth of interest cost, and interest payable of $2,000, because you're not paying it yet, you're going to pay it in April. Okay, so that's what's going to happen basically for every month from May through um, the following March. Then when you get to April, you will pay out the full year's interest of 24,000. That's just 12% of 200,000. Part of that comes out of the payable that you've been accruing because you've accrued 11 months at $2,000 per month of payable up till that point. So you've got 22,000 of payable to pay out. And you've got the interest expense for April, $2,000, right? That would just be the normal journal entry here, except in April, you're actually paying that amount. You're not accruing it to a payable. So this is what your April journal entry would look like. Interest in this situation, because it's being paid out every year, would be classified as a current liability. If it was not being paid out for several years, you would put it as a long-term liability, but typically interest is paid more often. So it's typically a current liability. But notice the bond was a 10-year bond. So even though the interest is a current liability, that bond, at least for the first nine years of its life, will be a long-term liability until you get to that final year when payment is expected. So that's interest. There's actually nothing new there. It's handled just like interest on any other debt instrument, such as notes payable and that sort of thing. Now let's talk about the premium or discount and amortizing it. Here's where bonds have a unique feature. Remember, bonds are traded in the open market. Because they're traded in the open market, they're subject to market forces, which influences whether or not that bond gets issued at face value, the situation we just dealt with, or a premium or a discount where um, investors either overpaid or underpaid for the bond because it was either more attractive or less attractive relative to their other options. But the thing is, when you journalize um, bond issuances with premiums or discounts, you actually create an account called premium on bond payable or discount on bond payable. And it changes the carrying value of the bond on your books. However, once you reach maturity, the carrying value of your bond should equal the amount you actually need to pay out. In other words, the premium and the discount, they have to go away by the time you hit maturity. And they go away through a process called amortization. So amortization is the process of reducing the premiums or discounts over a bond's life. And here's how it works. And, and I'll show you an example in a moment, but just here's kind of the overview of how it works. In the case of, let's start with discount. What happened in discount is the amount that you borrowed, that investors gave you up front on the bond, is actually less than the amount that you're ultimately going to pay back, the face value of the bond. That's how the discount arises. Now, the journal entry for that tends to involve receive cash, record a discount, which is a debit, and then record your bonds payable, which is a credit. Okay, so notice we have this account, discount, debit. Over time, you need to reduce that discount down to zero. You want that to go away so that when the time comes to pay back the bond, the only thing left on your books is bond payable. And that's the thing you're going to get rid of. The way you're going to do this, as you can see, if it's a debit, you're going to have to credit it to get rid of it, right? And so you're going to reduce the discount on bond payable through a credit. So discount gets credited. And the debit that's going to join this is going to be interest expense. Now, you might be saying, wait a minute, we just talked about interest on the other slide, right? Interest is based on the, the percentage rate that's on your bond, what you're actually paying the investors. And that is true. Your core interest is based on that amount. 
However, if you have a premium or discount, that interest will then be adjusted to reflect the impact of the premium or discount. In this case, think about a discount where the amount you borrow is less than the amount you pay back. That's a cost to you, right? That, that differential where investors lent you more money than you have to give them, that's cost. But it's not recorded as a cost upon issuance. Notice there's no cost in this journal entry. So the way we recognize that cost is over the life of the bond, we are going to record interest expense. We're going to increase our interest expense as we get rid of the discount to reflect the additional cost incurred because of this situation. All right. Now, let's talk about premium. Premium's the opposite, right? In premium, the amount you borrow from investors is actually greater than the amount you're going to pay back. You're the one saving money. And so the initial issuance journal entry looks like this. Cash gets debited because you're receiving cash. Bond payable gets credited because you owe that. And you have premium being credited as well. So as you can see from this journal entry, if over time we need to get rid of the premium, we're going to have to debit it to get rid of the credit balance established upon issuance. So our journal entry is going to look like this. Premium, debit, interest expense, credits. That debit to premium will reduce the premium on bonds payable so that by the time the bond hits maturity, all you're left with is the bond payable to pay off. The credit to interest expense is actually going to offset some of the interest expense that you are recording as part of your normal interest payments. In other words, it's reducing the overall expense you're going to record. And the reason it's reducing the overall expense you're going to record is because you're saving money, right? You're going to ultimately pay back less than you borrowed. You are saving that premium. And therefore, you get to reduce your interest expense by the amount of that premium. Now, there are two ways that you can do this under US GAAP. One is the straight line amortization method. One is called the effective interest method. The effective interest method is actually the preferred method. It's also the more difficult of the two. And I'm not gonna talk about that one in this video. This video is gonna focus on strictly the straight line method, which just like straight line depreciation for fixed assets, simply takes that premium or discount and spreads it out equally over the life of the bond. So let's take a look at how this is then going to play out um, in, in, in a full scenario. So take a look at this. Assume, we're going back to that bond that we first started this lecture with. Assume that that 10-year, 200,000, 12% bond was issued with a $6,000 discount or premium being amortized straight line. Now, if we back up a second, remember, our monthly interest accrual looked like this. Debit interest expense, 2000 Credit interest payable, 2000 Now we're going to look at the situation with what if you had a premium or a discount that was also being amortized, and specifically amortized straight line. It's a $6,000 discount or premium. We're amortizing it over 10 years, so that means 600 per year. And because we're accruing our interest monthly, we're going to go ahead and amortize along with the interest, so we're going to do that monthly, so 600 divided by 12 months is $50 per month. So that's the amount of the premium or discount we're going to amortize every month. And notice what happens then. In this case, where we are amortizing a discount, we still have the interest payable of $2,000. That's the amount we have to pay out. We are getting rid of slowly at $50 per month that discount. And that discount is going to increase our interest expense by 50 bucks. So even though we're literally making a payment of $2,000 to whoever lent us the money, whoever holds the bond, the expense we're putting on our books is a little bit greater because we are working in some of the expense from the cost of giving the investor a discount to begin with. The premium does the opposite, okay? Again, we are still going to pay investors $2,000 because that is what the bond says. We're going to pay you $2,000 every month. Or, well, it says every year. We're accruing it monthly. 
we're going to slowly get rid of that premium, $50 per month. And as a result of that, it's actually going to lower our interest expense. Okay, it's going to lower it by 50 bucks every single month. And the idea here is that over time, over the full 10 years, we will have either incurred an extra 6,000 of, of, of interest expense because of the discount, or we will have saved an extra 6,000 of interest expense because of the premium, because of these monthly adjustments that are going to occur. Now, taking a look at this from the balance sheet perspective, here's the discount scenario. Here's, here's the premium scenario. This is still dealing with that same example that we've been talking about. Here's where we start, right? In the discount scenario, you have a bond payable, $200,000. You have a discount, $6,000, which gives it a book value of $194. After that first monthly accrual, the one we just did on the prior slide, you're still going to have a bond payable of $200,000, but take a look. That discount is now down to $59.50, which means your book value has actually gone up to $194.50. And this is going to happen month after month after month until you reach the final month of the life of the bond, in which case this is what your balance sheet will look like. Bonds payable, $200,000. No discount remaining for a book value of $200,000. And what happens at this point, because you have now reached maturity, is you are going to pay off that payable, and then the whole thing will be gone. Now let's take a look at the premium situation. We still have the bond payable of $200,000. In this case, it was a premium of $6,000 for a book value of 206. After that first journal entry that we just recorded on the previous slide, what would have happened is the bond is still 200, the premium has gone down to 5950. As a result, the book value has gone down. And then if you do that month after month for the entire life of the bond, eventually you're left with a payable no premium left, book value of 200, and you're ready to pay off the bond. So notice in both situations, either discount or premium, you adjust the book, you adjust the, the payable to get to the book value. In the case of a discount, your book value is lower. In the case of a premium, your book value is higher. But because the discount slowly goes away, the book value slowly creeps up toward 200. Because the premium slowly goes away, the book value slowly creeps down toward 200. But the end goal is the same in both situations. The discount goes away, the premium goes away, you're left with 200,000, you pay that off, and then the bond goes away. And along the way, you either incurred an extra 6,000 of interest expense, or you saved 6,000 of interest expense. All right. I know this one's super complicated. Amortization of bond premiums and discount, really difficult topic, but hopefully this kind of helped make sense of it for you. Um, I definitely encourage you to kind of back up, look through those examples again, especially now that you have the biggest picture, maybe walk through, go back to that original um, uh, uh, example of what the interest looked like, go back to my discussion of, of the amortization, and then look at that combined journal entry and just make sure you understand exactly what's happening there. But with that said, um, I hope you found this helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.